Hey there, Elliot here with my lovely assistant Raptor. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a portable power station from Jackery, more specifically the Explorer 500. Uh, now they have a few different units, basically uh, it just correlates with their number, uh, with how much power these things can output, and the device itself over here is essentially complementary or potentially even a replacement for gas or propane powered uh, generators that you might use when your power goes out. Now. This obviously being nice and compact and easy to uh, move around. It also has a lot of other use cases. Um, so we'll kind of go into that here in just a second. This being a portable power station, it's pretty self-explanatory what it is and what it does. Obviously there's some key features that we'll kind of go and highlight here in just a second, uh, but I do just want to kind of go over a few use cases where this might actually make more sense than buying those 1,000 to 3,000 or way more expensive uh, generators that you would buy that connects to your house or helps power kind of the larger utilities like your refrigerator. So obviously this is 500 or it's actually about uh, 514 uh, watts of power that will come out of this uh, we'll go into some of the nitty-gritty details about exactly what all that supports and what you can plug into it here in just a minute anyways uh, I live in wonderful Charleston South Carolina where hurricanes come and slap us at least once a year when that happens um, we have power lines that are not buried that means our power typically goes out from anywhere from like three days to a week and that will happen guaranteed at least once a year now of course we have other weather incidents where like a lightning bolt will blow up my transformer outside there and go without power too um, i also like to do a lot of outdoor stuff hiking a lot of do a lot of work that frankly on my property extension cords just aren't great uh, and then i have a few other weird kind of use cases which my chicken which has gone missing over here um, will be happy to uh, show you that example as well too uh, that being said basically um, it has some limitations being a lithium ion um, power generator but that being said uh, it also has a lot of benefits like it won't kill you when you have it powered in an enclosed space like a regular generator so that's probably a little bit useful a little bit of a payoff uh, also you're not going to be hauling around a generator if you're going to go hiking or glamping or whatever you want to uh, kind of specify that but there are a lot of uses basically anywhere you would need a typical amount of power or even just have an extra backup for power this will absolutely knock that out uh, but we'll kind of sum that up at the end too this being a portable power station really everything here is super simple to understand uh, if you've ever plugged anything into a wall which i'm assuming if you've uh, you're watching this video you probably have done that i think you'll understand exactly how this works so really there's uh, just a simple interface so you have a display here uh, it'll tell you exactly how much battery life and power this has left. It'll show you the output, which obviously nothing is plugged in, so it's zero. The input, which is also zero. Um, to charge up this device, it'll take about seven hours. And all you have to do is plug that in here, and you can plug that into your typical wall outlet. Now, uh, if you're kind of off grid or you're hiking, uh, you also have a few other options, which would be like a solar power unit. And I think there's like a 60 watt and maybe a 100 watt. I'm probably wrong about that first one, but um, Jackery does connect you with those devices as well. Uh, obviously, it takes a lot longer than seven hours. I think they suggest it might be 13 hours. It probably totally depends on how much sunlight is getting to those uh, solar panels. That being said, if your power is off, obviously, for like, you know, five days or a week or something more like that, um, it does give you that extra security that that device will be beneficial to you. So, um, obviously, we have a few other things. Pretty simple, again, to understand. AC outlet, uh, typical two plus uh, your ground plug to activate it once you plug something in. You just press that AC button. Uh, I don't know if you heard that over me talking, but the fan will kick in. So after a certain amount of wattage, obviously that fan will kick in too to make sure it doesn't overheat. Again, same deal, USB, you get three options. Press the button, powers it. DC, same thing. Uh, if you plug that in, you're good to go. And that's it. Um, yeah, again, you just plug your input there, it'll charge the device. Uh, you just tap your display, it'll keep that with a backlight and you're good to go. Uh, on the other side, there is this small little switch and a small LED light. Simple, simple. 
and that's it. Nothing on that side, nothing on the base, some nice little footers on there. Um, as far as some of the details on this thing, before we go and plug a bunch of stuff in and see exactly how this works, um, basically it's uh, just under 14 pounds and it does have, again, some limitations which I mentioned before. So it can have a device that will suck about 500 watts uh, simultaneously and it'll have a peak of a thousand. So obviously uh, some devices will have different spikes based on how how much uh, usage is gonna come out of that. So we'll kind of dig into that as I plug a bunch of stuff in there and see exactly what might charge and what might not charge. I'm going to leave this unit within the uh, chicken coop for about a week while I'm out of town. And I'm going to use that for a small camera so I can keep an eye on them. And then when I'm back in town, uh, I will go ahead and make sure that everything's still functioning. But that point we're just gonna plug in a bunch of random stuff and uh, see how well that works uh, it does have some limitations so i don't expect every single device to be able to be powered but uh, if your power does go out obviously uh, you'll be able to do things like charge your computer laptop tablets phone uh, some of your emergency equipment flashlights if you have usb powered stuff like that um, basically that kind of thing for our very first test, uh, we're going to put the Jackery through a few interesting kind of conditions and as you can see we are inside a chicken coop. Uh, basically we're just going to test out how that heater would work. I actually had the little camera in the coop active for about a week while I was gone and I also left this in here just in case the power went out, which it coincidentally did because we had uh, just shy of a tropical storm, so it would have worked great if this actually needed to be active. Fortunately the weather was fine. Uh, so the chicken sitter didn't need to use it, but um, just a couple of things and it is dusty. It is a chicken coop and it's also a nice little test to see after a week how this hand uh, hands off to being in a dusty environment, which obviously this is. Uh, if you're camping, similar situation, probably a little less dusty, but anyways, uh, there's just a few different inputs and buttons on here to kind of go through. Um, display that will obviously bring up the display how many watts are going in or out uh, over here i have the heater for the chicken coop plugged in so let's just kick that in uh, to actually activate you do have to press that ac button um, by default it's about three watts that usually show up i do have the heater off so we got that chicken coop over, uh, chicken heater over here uh, let's put it in that lowest setting Right. It's already at about 81, 80-ish watts. Uh, you can tell that the fan is not currently active, but let's see what happens when we put it all the way up. Immediately, that fan inside of there kicks in. It's really not that loud. In fact, I'm going to be quiet for a minute. You should probably just be able to hear the chickens out here chirping and all the other ambient sound. So, I mean, that's what it is, but let's turn that heater off. There you go. It immediately kicks that fan back off. Um, but as you can see, that, that battery was trickling down. All right, so this one should be a pretty quick, easy test. Uh, if you've ever had a motorcycle and you don't have a power outlet, let me just tell you, having uh, an older bike is not super fun because you definitely need access to a power outlet so you can use a trickle charger, especially in the winter months. So. I have a house, not an issue now, but if I have Jackery, I could just kind of strap it on there and hope no one steals it or I put it behind my place. That'd be great, because otherwise you have to find a power outlet or you have to actually go in here, take the battery out and charge it that way. Uh, the charger unit is actually showing that it is doing its thing and it's only draining about 15 watts, which is exactly how uh, that should function. So we're doing great. All right, now that the TV is up and running and functioning, it looks like the wattage is about 150 uh, consistently. And I will say that the battery life, uh, every few minutes you'll actually kind of see it trickle down. So it was at 50 when I started recording, which was about three minutes ago. Uh, it's now at 48%, which honestly is great, um, but you know, you're not probably gonna wanna use this if you have a power outage. You have other uh, more useful reasons for that. Unless maybe you have to connect to the TV uh, to watch weather reports, something like that. 
All right, so obviously this is marketed as something that you can take hiking, uh, kind of uses a backup generator for when your power goes out. What about if you want to take your workstation somewhere else? Um, so obviously someone's probably not going to be taking a lathe somewhere to you know, work in the middle of the woods, but uh, this definitely sucks out a lot of juice. So we're going to just see if this happens to work. Right now we see we are at 53%, barely using any watts, just being plugged in. Um, I don't really have a whole lot of bets on this working, but let's see what happens. Holy crap. All right, so that actually works. That's pretty sweet. Um, see the watts at full speed. It's only at 91, 90. All right, so it's actually using, uh, oh, nope, never mind. It's kind of climbing up and up. But right now it's only 100 watts and that electric heater for the chickens is like 140. So that's not as bad. I guess I uh, overestimated how much power this thing used, but that's great for Jackery. It's pretty cool that you can actually take power tools like this and use it wherever you need. So this is probably a big one here for uh, St. Charleston because the power goes out. It's usually after a hurricane and then it becomes like 90, 100 degrees and some humidity. So uh, let's plug her in. Hey, and it immediately powers up does exactly what it should. Uh, it's only using 16 watts up. There it goes, it's kind of trickling back up. But 25 watts for a tiny fan, probably 100, not any more than 100 watts for a bigger fan. Uh, you can definitely stay cool for a good while if you have something like this and your power goes out. Alrighty, so as you can see, obviously you can charge a uh, older model MacBook Pro. Uh, which I guess could be pretty helpful if you're without power. Um, now, obviously, you're going to need your router and other Wi-Fi devices if you still need to connect to that, but I guess if you just need to type on there or use your phone as a mobile hotspot, that is uh, one option, and it does work great. It's only using, like, 25 watts without it being on right now. All right, so I've got this uh, plugged in. We're going to go ahead and see if for some reason it's going to allow me to use this leaf blower situation probably not and nope it kicks off mostly for the uh i stole the idea of will it blend let's see if blend tech will work with the jackery all right we're just gonna put it in clean mode oh it does not unfortunately the jackery does not blend all right, so just to make this really simple and not give you a whole bunch of bad math that I'm going to totally butcher, uh, I'll just give you the formula that Jackery gives you so you can actually estimate exactly uh, how long this unit would work with the device that you have. So they say it is about 500 watts times 0.85 uh, divided by the operating power of your device. So they give the example of 500 watts times 0.85 uh, divided by 60 watts. So they would suggest that would be like a box fan. And that means that this device fully charged would allow you to use that fan for about seven hours. So would I, and maybe the chickens recommend this? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm gonna, if we're gonna go on like the five star rating system, we'll give it a perfect five out of five. There is literally only one limitation that came out of my review I'm working with this for about a month, which is if you have a device that runs under or at about 10 watts, uh, after about six or seven hours, it will just automatically shut off. So for the most part, that's not an issue. You can actually plug in another device and that will overcome that uh, shortfall, but otherwise it's just not a problem. So while I was gone for a while and I had a very low watt usage camera, obviously that kind of cut off after a little while. So the chickens had to plug that back in uh, or not plug it back in, just press that button and it worked. Uh, I didn't even need it. Um, but it was just good to have that kind of like peace of mind thing. Uh, that being said, you know, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, there are some other uh, things that you probably want to consider with it being lithium ion, uh, such as the safety of a battery like that, um, the battery life, which is about 500 charges. Um, but, you know, otherwise, if you need something that, you know, you can take around and have a decent power source that's not one of those little battery packs, or if you need something to rely on when your power goes out, like it absolutely does over here, uh, this will absolutely knock that out. Now, I'm not going to obviously be able to uh, plug in my washer and dryer or my refrigerator, but if I have a mini fridge, uh, if I need to keep communication up, that kind of stuff, uh, obviously, as you saw, 
this easily was able to do it. I mean, it was able to power a damn lathe. I don't think anyone needs to do that, but that takes a lot of power. So that's pretty cool. Five out of five, definitely recommend that. Um, the price in itself, if you want to look at it from that standpoint, it just makes sense. You're basically paying a cent per watt that that works with. So, um, you know, you're just not going to get that kind of benefit or peace of mind when you have to deal with the maintenance and huge pain in the ass that comes along with a typical generator. This, you literally just plug it in and as long as you charge it every three to five months, the shelf life on there will be great. So it will be there and ready to go when you need it. You don't have to deal with the gas and all that other stuff that comes along with uh, generators that might kill you a little bit. Um, but that being said, yeah, definitely. It's a great resource. You're doing great. You're doing great.